You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC Conroe and worldwide on the IRLoneStar.com. This is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Show. Welcome to our show today. We've got a full agenda, and I hope you'll stick with us throughout the show. Uh, we're going to open today with our thought for the week entitled, Is Your Business Moving Forward? We also have some special guests with us today. Alan and Matt, owners of Crosby Custom Remodeling, will be joining us in the business owner segment. Also joining us today will be Dick Schisler, general manager of Lone Star Community Radio to update us on the business right here at Lone Star. Also joining us today in the expert corner will be Suzanne Swerick. She's the program coordinator of the Center for Population Health and Aging School of Public Health at Texas A&M. We're going to talk about a little bit about personal health, why that's important to successfully building your business. And of course, I'll close out the show with my Silver Fox Tip of the Week. This week, I'm going to talk about what is preventing you from moving forward. So I encourage you, sit back, grab your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we talk about the business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. And before we move on, I want to talk to you just for a minute about utilizing a mentor. If you've listened to the show before, you know, one of the things I do as a Silver Fox advisor is I mentor people. I advise, I do some consulting. Mentoring, though, is a little bit different. And I came across an article this past week that one of the solutions, in fact, you're going to hear a little bit about it later, of when you're stuck in your business is to go out and find a mentor, a mentor and invest the time and money to bring somebody in to help you get unstuck, help you keep moving forward. And that's what I do. I work with businesses to help them successfully grow and build their business. Because let's face it, as a business owner, many times we don't have anybody to talk to. We don't have anybody to ask, what, what should I do with this employee? How can I motivate them? Should I terminate them? All kinds of questions. And I know when I was in business, my wife got tired of me asking her those kind of questions and frankly said, go out and find somebody that's a lot more knowledgeable and that you can talk to. So I encourage you to, to, if you haven't done it in the past, research on using a mentor. And if you've got a question and you want to talk to me about it, then call me. My number, 832-699-2132. Or if you want, rather, email me here at the station, Rick at IRLoneStar.com. Well, the thought for the week, is your business moving forward? Well, that's sort of a question I think subconsciously all of us in business ask ourselves from time to time. I've been known to ask myself that question every day. It's been a bad week. Something happened. I couldn't out of my control or in my control, and I sort of feel like I'm moving backwards. You know, Henry Ford, who was a great entrepreneur and business person, one time was quoted as saying, if everyone is moving forward together, then success takes care of itself. And I think that's the key in the business. Even when something happens, if your entire team, all the employees, whether you have one or a hundred, are on the same page, as they like to say, and move in the same direction, then that keeps the business moving. So the first thing you need to do is be sure that everyone is on board with your mission. Everyone understands what the company's all about. Not just what product or service you provide, but they understand what your mission as the owner. What are you trying to accomplish by being in business besides making money and increasing revenues? There's always another issue or two or goal that we have, and we need to learn to share that with our employees. What does a moving forward look like in your company? Ask yourself that. Is your company moving forward every day? Or does it move in leaps and bounds and then get knocked back two or three steps, two steps forward, one step back? It shouldn't happen that way. You should be able to build your company, again, whether you have one or 100 employees, where you're constantly, consistently, sometimes slowly, moving forward. Communication and building relationships with your employees, vendors, and customers, in my opinion, is the key to moving forward in your business. Opportunities are right in front of you. So grab them and move on. The Weekly Business Hour is where Montgomery County and business throughout the world comes to talk about the latest in business news, ideas to improve their business, and to hear from some of our local business leaders on how they have found success in their businesses 
right here in Montgomery County. And I want to remind you before we go further that we do have a Facebook page, the Weekly Business Hour. Go to Facebook, find our page, again, at the Weekly Business Hour, and like us. And also set an alert or an alarm. That way, when we post a new show each week, you'll be alerted to it. You can check it out, see what the topics, who the guests were, and perhaps you'll find something that you'd like to listen to. So I encourage you, like us on Facebook at the Weekly Business Hour page. Now we're going to check in with Dick here at Lone Star and see what's going on in the business with Lone Star. Hey, Rick. Yeah, I just want to let your listeners know if you want to be entertained on Sundays from now on, we are kind of bringing back the live radio plays we do, uh, old school radio or old, uh, old-time radio radio plays or radio shows back in the day. Uh, we have a special group called the Lone Star Radio Troupe who are going to be putting on one play once a month in the studio uh, it's, it's actually all recorded in the studio, uh, so I encourage your listeners who enjoy those kind of things to check out our calendar at IRLoneStar.com slash show calendar to see when exactly the show, what show is playing. And if you want to audition to be on the radio for the radio plays, they have a Facebook group called Lone Star Radio Troop, and they post all their upcoming auditions as events as we've seen on Facebook. Well, I love to hear that. I have always enjoyed the radio plays. I like old-time radio plays. And I'm glad they're coming back here to Lone Star Radio. Well, now we're to that part of the show where we're going to talk to our business owner guest. As I mentioned earlier, we have Alan and Matt, owners of Crosby Custard Remodeling, joining us today. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, now, what's the relationship here? Let's put it out on the table. (laughs) Father and son. I'm son. He's father. Okay. Actually, it's more of a uh, son-father business. He actually owns the business, and I work for him. It's kind of a turnaround. Well, let me ask you a first question. How's it working for your son without trying to put you on the spot? Oh, I haven't had any complaints yet. It's not that he doesn't have them. I just haven't heard them yet. You know, that's interesting because I I worked early in my career with my dad in a family business, and I enjoyed it. uh, And then as I went out on my own, I always felt very comfortable coming back and asking for advice. In a sense, he was my mentor. So do you mentor your son, Matt? Well, there are times that he needs somebody to, like you said, somebody to talk to, somebody to, you know, discuss the problems that he can't discuss necessarily with his employees. So that's, it's nice to be there and and give what advice that I can. Yeah, I think that's a a neat opportunity, Matt. I hope you embrace it because it's really neat to have somebody who has some experience and the fact that your father and you're related, uh, at least in my experience, was just outstanding. I really got a lot out of it. Well, let me ask you, let's get back to your business, Crosby Remodeling, or Customer Remodeling, excuse me. What do you, what do your business do? What exactly do you offer? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We just offer custom remodeling uh, service to mainly homeowners. Uh, We usually don't work with investors or realtors or uh, or too much commercial work. We specialize in meeting the needs of homeowners who have either been saving for a long time or have, have had a dream of transforming their home in a custom way that uh, they don't just want to hire someone off the street. They want to hire someone that uh, to have a relationship with, basically for the months that the remodeling project, you know, goes on for. So that's kind of where we come in is we offer that relationship. We offer that professional uh, front. Uh, we offer the team to make that happen. So that's... Well, you know, with somebody, and I mentioned to you prior to the show, that's done quite a bit of remodeling over the fact that every house we have, I think my wife and I had three or four homes, except for the current one, which we built from scratch. We did major remodeling. Uh, There's a lot of upside, downside, sideways in remodeling. And uh, being a remodeler, I think, is a real challenge. How do you handle some of those challenges on a day-to-day basis? Uh, Probably one of the biggest challenges is that we are in your home. (laughs) We're not just building a home that's empty and sitting on an empty lot. We're in your home every day. And one of the ways we confront that difficulty is that uh, my supervisor, Don, he's at the sites every day. He's in the customer's presence uh, at least once a day, uh, dealing with any issues that come up, Uh, just being present and having a lot of communication. So presence and communication probably are two biggest factors. Well, let me ask you, why, Alan, why did you all go in business, or why did your son go in business, let you, from your perspective? Well, you know, he, uh, you know, I'll let him tell his story about as far as why he went into the business, but, you know, his business was going well and thriving. He had, uh, he had someone who was doing sales and uh, wasn't being as successful as he wanted to. Uh, the individual had a lot of experience in construction, but 
not as much experience in sales, and I have about 15 to 20 years in commercial business to business sales. And uh, so I said, I'll, you know, if you want, I'll step in and, and pick that up. And he didn't just give me the job. He actually interviewed me. I had to put together a business plan, and, and you know, he wanted to make sure he's making the right decision, and I respected that. Uh, put together a model and business plan for him and stepped in, and so far it's been, it's worked well. Uh, you know, a few business ch challenges of getting used to working with each other and coordinating with each other, but uh, all in all, it's been good. I think uh, he was telling me the other day that uh, we're almost at the same revenue number that we had all of last year as a company. So we're pretty excited about that. Oh, I'd be excited too. You know, your story gets better and better. The fact, not only are you there to mentor him, but you're there to also bring in revenue and sales. And I think that that's one of the biggest challenges small businesses have is how to generate revenue and sales. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I find it the number one challenge of any small business I've ever worked with. Well, let's ask you, let's go back to you, Matt. Why did you go into business for yourself? Well, it, I, I'd i hate to say that it wasn't a plan. Um, I started off doing cabinetry. I loved uh, working with my hands, creating stuff. And uh, I actually started doing this work on the side to get me through engineering school. Um, but as the business, as it started working, and as I see, you know, I enjoyed making money instead of spending money on education. Um, we took that route and we enjoyed it. It was about five years ago. Um, and it's been up and down and good and bad, but mainly good. And I can't imagine working for someone anymore after all this. Yeah. You know, so. Once you've been in business for yourself, it's hard to go back. Yeah, I could. There's imagine. no doubt yeah. about it. So you basically left school. Is that what I heard you say? And, and yeah. decided, hey, I want to be in business for myself. Yeah, it, it was working and we, you know, I enjoyed it, which was a huge deal. And um, I didn't want to have to, I wanted to create my own future per se, have control over you know, if, you know, what we, what we wanted to do, and so. And it sounds like you have no regrets for that decision. No, sir, I do not. Well, that's fantastic. Well, let me ask you, I mean, what is the key to success in your business? I mean, one, you've already given us one measure, the fact that your sales through, I guess, seven months are equal to or close to last year for, for 12 months. Mm -hmm. What is the key to your success, Matt, in your business? Um, the, the general key is, is happy clients, because happy clients will – will leave good reviews, they'll be positive, but to have happy clients, um, it's just about creating an environment, like I said, of relationship. Um, that to me is the key to success, is building positive relationships with clients, vendors, with everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, money comes into it, obviously that's a key to success, but when you just make people happy and give what they want in a way that they enjoy, that's that makes everything else fall into place. Well, it makes a lot of sense to me. You mentioned uh, or alluded to in that uh, bit of conversation that uh, getting good reviews. Do you rely upon reviews that are posted, say, in Yelp or some of these other uh, Internet-related uh, businesses? To Does that affect or impact your business? Yeah, I think uh, Alan might have a bit more clarity since he's been in, in the front view the last six months of everything. But uh, absolutely, because a lot of people will request our services without even – speaking with us just because they see the reviews. I mean, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that's really a big part of it. Because, you know, once when they see the reviews, read the reviews, it, they feel the personal contact. And almost every one of the reviews that we have out there talk about that personal touch. And, uh, you know, having I, – I was never really personally involved in construction business myself. Um, I, it kind of skipped a gene, a generation. My granddad was a uh, master carpenter. My father was a master carpenter. Skipped my generation and – now Matt has picked it up, and uh, I think that personal touch, because I've seen so many contractors, and even now that we, uh, we, we're we actually picking up jobs where contractors have left off and not completed the, the process. And so what we try to do is maintain that personal contact, and that's the feedback that I get from even people we're signing a contract today with the customer. And primarily, even before the sale, one of the reasons that she's going with us is for that reason, that personal touch and, contract and contact, that she knows we're going to be there and we're going to follow up and make sure everything's taken care of. Boy, it's great to have that kind of reputation. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we're already to our first break today. I hope you'll stay with us because when we come back, we're going to talk to Alan and Matt about employees and subs and how do you find the best ones and keep them working for you. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. A Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for summer internship opportunities, 
The Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to grab the mic and be on the air. The Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world all year round. Be an on-air personality, talk show producer, or YouTube TV podcast editor. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. advisor and host of the weekly business hour and i want to thank you for joining us today we've been talking with uh, alan and matt with crosby customer remodeling about how they've built their business up matt's the owner of the business and he's got his father has joined him as the fellow in charge of sales so we've got an interesting dynamic here and it's been fun to explore that guys and you've been real candid about it but let's talk about employees i mean i believe employees or subcontractors if you're in a contracting business are really one of the basic keys to success. Let me ask you, and whoever would like to answer, what is the, I mean, how do you find the right people to work with? Uh, I'll tell you what, to be honest, that has been the most difficult part of this business. Um, Subcontractors, you know, you got a lot of fly-by-nights. People who come in say they can do what they do, and then they end up not being able to just because they wanted the job. Um, But to find the key guys, in my experience, has been if you find one, they're going to know more of those key guys because they build relationship with people that they have the same standard as they do. So, uh, you know, I've got my guy, Don. He's been, honestly, uh, that was luck that found, uh, he found me. Um, and with him, he brought along an arsenal of qualified subs that really take us to the next level because uh, that, was, that was a struggle for a while is finding the right team. And once you find the right team, you want to keep the right team by taking care of them whatever that that be, uh, moral support, financial support, uh, just taking care of them. So in my experience, uh, finding the right guys has really been uh, not a lot of what I've done, honestly. It's been it's come to me, and then uh, I with that person, uh, it expands out to more qualified people. So, it, yeah, that's it's a difficult aspect of the, of the job, for sure. Well, you, you know, you do have to always, I think, any business as you grow, put a team together, again, whether it's subs or employees. Let me ask you, though, you, you sort of alluded to it, but how do you keep them motivated? Um, that's something, honestly, this year I'm trying to work on better. Uh, but as, uh, right now, the motivation is uh, a desire to grow a business from scratch, uh, a desire that they've had to be a part of something that is good and makes people happy and is successful because as you as you mentioned this business can be uh, fraught with with people that aren't you know uh, good at heart or good with good intentions so it's their desire to see something grow it's my desire to see my team grow uh, both financially and their well-being so it's that kind of common uh, uh, motive uh, just to grow together as a team I don't really see them as much as employees I see them as teammates so I think that's a big part of it. That's a great way to approach, particularly subcontractors, to make them part of your team. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, uh, and, and either one again, Alan, or how do you all market your business? What's the key? I mean, you've got a reputation that you've built over five years. How do you let other people know that are out there that have not heard of you uh, about what you're doing? A lot of what we're trying to do is focus on multimedia because everybody is connected in one way or another, uh, whether it's through Facebook or some other multimedia or website, and uh, draw that in and create a community conversation to get a back and forth. Uh, We try to put on jobs that we've done, that we've completed, show the jobs in progress, uh, so that people can see what to expect as the progress goes on. Uh, Put things out there, answer questions that people may be asking, but not verbally per se. Uh, you know, what is my contract? What's this going to involve? You know, how can I be sure that you're going to be the right contractor? Um, what about your products? What kind of products you uh, you utilize? And one of the things I try to tell people up front is that we're not going to be the cheapest on the market. Our strive, the, what we strive for is to be the best remodeler, not the least expensive remodeler. And I would, I'd be worried for someone who promotes that, that we're the least expensive remodeler. So, our focus is on quality and uh, customer satisfaction. That's And their customers are going to be the best marketing tool that we have. And our two most uh, 
profitable avenues of marketing is, is home advisor um, and uh, home shows, trade shows. So those are the two avenues that bring in the most revenue for our business. So you go to a, you're talking about where you go to a trade show like these home shows that we see in different venues uh, during the year. Yes, correct. Like there's one, uh, two at the Marriott in the Woodlands, uh, twice a twice a year. Those are the main ones that we go to. So those two bring a good amount of money in, uh, along with Home Advisor. Right, how, Home Advisor. I mean, how does that really work? I mean, we were talking a little bit before the show about the quality of people. Do they do anything to make sure you're upholding the standards that they have? Yeah, when I first signed on, um, they gave, they called me and they checked my references. They they asked for I believe three completed jobs with clients that they could call on to make sure that I was you know legit. Um, and then they checked uh, my vendors to see the relationship I was with my vendors. So it'd be very difficult for someone that was just a fly by night to try to get on a home advisor because they call, they check. So it's a good site. Well, one of the things that has been impressive to me is the fact that we utilize not only references of business. If, if we're looking at a new potential customer and they want us, they want actual references. We actually give them the phone number of some of our previous jobs, our previous clients. They can call. On occasion, we've actually taken them out to sites that are that are actively working, and they've actually been able to interact uh, with the client themselves during that process and say, "How's it going?" You know, and. and Sure, there are going to be struggles, there are going to be challenges, but it's a matter of how you answer those and how pleased the customer is with your with your response to their needs. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of a lot of sense to me. Well, you mentioned you. If, let's take a for example, or the idea that you go to a home show and you're in there and there's maybe a hundred vendors. I don't know how many, but so there's several remodelers. Why do I decide to use you? How do you really stand out when I take a look? Because many times people want to take bids or whatever which to me are not apples to apples, can't be uh, because of the vision of how the work works. And it's, but how do you make yourself stand out as a company, Matt? I think uh, from what I've heard of my clients that choose us and what I've, what I've mentioned is um, we don't force people into uh, a design bubble that we think they should be in. If a person wants to do something that's off the wall, we'll go with it. Um, if a person just wants us to come by and present something, they don't want to come to our showroom, which we don't have a showroom, but they want to, you know, pull them away and try to control the, the, the outcome of the build. You know, we're not like that. We're there for them. Uh, we're not going to try to control um, how they want things done. So to me, that's been one of the biggest differences between us and other large remodeling companies is that we, we cater to their needs 100%. Uh, we might advise um, and also, we, we have the professional front. You know, we're not just uh, Joe in a truck um, going around. We have the professional front also to, to stand against the big guys. So, Yeah, in fact, the, the last home show that we did uh, this spring, they actually put us right next. It was a mistake. They put us right next to our largest competitor. Oh, wow. And <laughs> we basically, what when I saw someone talking to the competitor, I would stop them as they go by and, and engage them, and we ended up with a number of good quality leads out of that show. And people that are serious about wanting to remodel, they come with everything in hand. Uh, sometimes they'll have plans, but they'll say, this is what I want, and so forth. And our first step is to set an appointment to engage them and, and get down to the nitty-gritty of what they're actually looking for. So did I sense that's a recommendation going forward, always locate next to your bed <laughs> editor? <laughs> we hope not to do that this next time. Yeah, uh, in yeah. fact, we should, we're talking, we're, we should be in the next home show, which is Labor Day weekend coming up in September. Now, what show is that? That's the Woodland Home and Garden Show. Okay, so Labor Day weekend, mm -hmm. and you guys will be there. Well, that's, that's, that's interesting. I can imagine when that first happened, you kind of, whoa, what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you uh, gathered your thoughts and made it work in a big way for you. Well, let me ask you. Customer complaints, and we, you guys spent a lot of time talking with us today about communication and the fact that you, in a sense, touch the client every day when the job's going on through your supervisor or otherwise. How do you handle it if someone calls up, though, and has a complaint? Maybe about the sub that's there, they're messy, or they've done this, or they damaged that. What do you do? Yeah, uh, probably one of the first things we do is we do, we make sure everybody knows, uh, for instance, my dad, uh, over the weekend, he made sure that I knew about a text that he received from a client saying we had a bit of overspray on uh, some some of their 
furniture outside, which is not an issue. We can clean it up. But to them, you know, it's a big deal, which, of course, I understand. So big thing is making the team aware, 100%. Hey, did you hear this? Did you hear that? When are we going to take care of it? And then we all make sure we contact the client and say, you know, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, very respectful, we understand. Even though to us it's like that's really not a big deal, but to them it is. So we make sure that, uh, for instance, today our painter is going back there today and taking care of it when she informed us yesterday. So it's taking care of it right when it comes up. It's informing our whole team and letting our whole team know that we need to be extra careful and make sure that client is taken care of 100%. That's you know, that, that sounds like a great process, the idea that everyone is aware. And I've not, yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard that approach and letting everyone, even though they weren't directly involved in causing the situation. Well, part of it is that, you know, the, the discussion we had earlier about establishing a relationship, making sure the relationship's there. And in the sales process, very, you know, I establish a relationship. And then as things progress, I introduce Matt and, and, and our uh, project manager as well. But a lot of times customers will call me first, even though I've already kind of out of the picture because I'm one of the guys they've asked not to pick up a hammer. And so I pass that on to them and they actually deal, you know, the customer will call me. I'll call either Matt or Don and whichever one might need to take care of that. And then we make sure, like Matt said, stay in communication. Yeah, obviously I, I'm a big believer that's a very much a key in business. Well, we've got just a little bit of time left today. What does the future hold for your company? Uh, well, in terms of um, growth, we have kind of solidified on, on one sales guy, one project manager, and myself this year. And next year, we hope to bump up to another project manager, which means more jobs, um, and hopefully expand out to other areas such as uh, Sugar Land and uh, on the east side and on the south side. So just taking it one step at a time, not trying to grow too fast, but just steady, progressive, year-by-year -year growth. Um, and enjoy the process as we go. So. Well, let me ask you, uh, as we wind down, if people want to get in touch with you, talk about perhaps remodeling or something they may have heard, one of your comments today about doing business, what's the best way for them to do it? They can even just send us an email. Um, it's Our email address is crosbyremods at gmail.com. Now, both Matt and I utilize that same email address. So if you can address it to either one of us, and we'll both get it. Or you can contact me directly through my sales number at 832-475-1303. And we try to respond to those within a 24-hour period. Well, gentlemen, I can't thank you enough, son and father, Matt and Alan, for joining us today. You've got a wonderful business story, and I thank you so much for sharing it with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go take our bottom of the hour break. When we come back, we're going to have Suzanne Square join us. She's with A&M, and we're going to talk about your health and why it's important your business, so please stay with us. A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936 647 3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're in our third segment of the day. This is called the Expert Corner. But before we start, I want to remind you that you can find a podcast of the entire show today at YouTube at the Weekly Business Hour channel. So check it out if you've missed part of the show or you just want to replay it so you can pick up some great information that our previous guests, Alan and Matt, offered. Well, today our expert guest is Suzanne Swerk. She is the program coordinator for the Center for Population Health and Aging School of Public Health at Texas A&M. Suzanne, good morning. Good morning. Boy, I tell you, that title you have, that almost ran out of breath. <laughs> I know. The other week, Cindy had a, had a rough time with it, too. It's a lot. It's a lot. Well, I deeply appreciate, again, you joining us today. Tell our listeners, if you would, we'll start off, is what is your mission? Uh, what is the mission of the, the program that you do coordinate? So um, the main, our main goal is to 
but to expand um, what we call evidence-based health and wellness programming in, throughout Texas. And what we intend to do by that is really um, empower adults um, to take control of their health and help them realize that they have way more control over their body and their health and their life and what happens to them that sometimes we realize we do. And that can be very um, very beneficial for both your physical and mental health and just your overall life in general. Well, let me ask you, what are the health issues that concern you most? Um, well, me, me, me personally or just Well, like in the programming society. that you do, yeah. <laughs> so we have a couple of different programs that, that we do. Um, one of our most popular is the Diabetes Self-Management Program, um, which is for anyone who has diabetes, um, has been told that they are pre-diabetic, or that loves someone who fits either of those categories. So it's for support persons as well. Um, so that's a pretty popular one. And we also have Chronic Pain Self-Management, which encompasses quite an array of um, pain conditions, you know, whether it's fibromyalgia or you know, the recurring injury or recurring pain from an injury. And then we also have a chronic disease self-management program, which kind of is, is a catch-all, if you will, for anyone with any chronic condition. Um, and again, all three of these actually are for people who have that condition or their loved ones. Um, but the chronic disease is for, it's for anyone with any condition, whether it's you know, something to do with their thyroid, or it is diabetes, or uh, heart disease, or, you know, high blood pressure, or anything like that. Well, let me ask you, just do a hypothetical. I'm a businessman. I have 10, 15 employees. What, or why is it important that I be concerned about their physical health, or mental health, for that matter? Well, as I would think as an employer, um, you know, and when you have an employee who takes care of their body mentally and physically, um, they're they're more likely to be productive at work. They're less likely to need to take sick days um, when they when they take just a little bit of time here and there to care for themselves, whether again it's physically or mentally. Um, and because it all affects each other, stress and um, you know mental and anxiety type problems do affect your physical health, and your physical health then. If, in turn affects your mental health even more and it's this vicious cycle and so as a business owner it, you know it, or a business person it's valuing your employees as a whole person um, and realizing that their, their whole self affects the job that they do anyway. So what you're suggesting if I own a business and I have obviously one of my most if not most important assets are my employees that I should take it upon right. myself then to make sure they get informed about programs and opportunities out there like yours so that they can address, if they have a physical or mental issue, they know where to go to address it. Right. That would be a, a great thing to do as an employer. <laughs> well, I think many times, when and, I, and this has happened to me in my career raising a large family, that one time we had a situation we didn't really know where to turn right away. And we immediately went out and, you know, into the world, so to speak, trying to find out where can we connect and get some help. But uh, let me ask you, how do you market? How do you get the word out about what you're doing? Um, we get the word out any way we can. Um, case in point, we appear on local radio shows. Um, and we also we have flyers that we pass around in the communities. Um, we, let's see, like we have some workshops coming up through Conroe Parks and Recreation at the C.K. Ray Recreation Center. And um so they'll appear in the fall playbook for Parks and Rec. And so that's one way to promote classes. And then the employees of Conroe, um, the city of Conroe, will receive email communication about that. But as far as the rest of the community, too, we, we drop flyers everywhere. We are working on putting something in the Conroe Courier um, and just kind of any and every avenue we can think of. <laughs> well, it makes a lot of sense. And if I was a business person and was interested and getting some information to post, if you will, in my business for my employees. Wh who should I contact, and you know, how do I contact them? You can contact me, and uh, my phone number is nine seven nine four three six nine three four two. Okay. Well, let me ask you. You you sort of get out the word and get out the information. I, I from what I understand, primarily using a workshop format. Is that correct? Yes. 
So each of the three workshops I mentioned, the chronic disease, the diabetes, and the chronic pain, um, each of those three oops, um, are six weeks six week workshops. So they meet once a week for about two to two and a half hours um, for six weeks. So every, let's say, Thursday night beginning September 6th or Wednesday night. Um, that's Wednesday. Now, when is your next uh, workshop? Through. So the next one we have, well, we have quite a few coming up. Um, in Conroe, the next one we have starting up is going to be on September 1st, and that's going to be the chronic disease program, which, again, is all-encompassing. So just about any adult could take that workshop. Um, and so that will be Fridays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and I know you mentioned that since this, of course, is a business hour, um, we do have two workshops coming up through Conroe Parks and Rec that are being offered outside of 9 to 5. Um, that is, they have a diabetes program starting on September 19th, so it'll be Tuesday evening starting at 6 p.m., and then they also have a current disease starting in October um, at 6 p.m. Well, I think that obviously that's a great, you spread those times around so they're convenient for everyone that might be interested. Well, let me ask you this, right. that as you go out into the community and, and talk about and lead these workshops, what do you find that uh, is the information or the issue that people are most concerned with? As far as the workshop themselves, itself or like what they would get out of the workshop? Well, when, when they're participating in the workshop and you're getting feedback, people asking questions, what do you find in general are the issues that they're concerned most with? I would say the biggest issues that come about are really um, probably communicating with your healthcare providers and your healthcare organizations. And then also communicating with your your family and your friends about your condition and what you need as far as your own per, as far as your own personal needs. You know, communicating to someone else like, "Hey, I'm on a new medicine and it makes me tired." They're not going to know that if you don't tell them. And that that is one of the things that we um, work on in all three of these workshops is communication skills, not only with your you know your family and friends, but with healthcare providers specifically. Because, again, you know, 90, 90, roughly 95% of healthcare occurs outside of the doctor's office. You know, you only spend maybe 20 minutes in, a doc, in the doctor's office. If you even get 20 minutes with the provider themselves, um, you know, maybe every three or four months, depending on what kind of condition you have. And that's, that's not a lot of time. Everything else is spent, it's, it's you doing it. And so these workshops really give us the tools to be able to, um, do what our providers tell us in those 20 minutes and go out and spend the rest of our time working our health condition with the everyday tasks that we need to do to have a full life. Well, you know what I hear you saying, and to me, I've, I've always sort of felt this way, but what I hear you saying is that we have to take responsibility for our own health as individuals and recognize the fact that, as you called, your 20 minutes with the doctor. I mean, it's so true. And then you, you're going to go out there for three or four months or longer before your next visit. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to do some things to be proactive, if, particularly if you have a chronic condition, to better your health and better your relationships with family and friends and, and where you work. And these sound like great yeah, opportunities is, to exactly do. That's exactly right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's, it, you're exactly right, though. It's right on the money. You know, it's, it really is. You have to, we all know what we need to eat better and exercise more as a general population, but what does that even mean? And until you decide that that's what you are going to do, you know, you, you can't do it. But this, these workshops are really great in that they show you how you can do that. You all know, for the most part, what we need to do, but it's, you know, getting the concrete information about how to work it in to what you already do with your life and what you might need to do as well. Well, it sounds like a great opportunity. Suzanne, I want to thank you for taking time to join us today. If some of our business listeners want to contact you either for personal issues or to get information for their employees, what's the best way for them to do that? They can give me a call at 979-436-9342. Well, thank you again, Suzanne. And I encourage you business owners out there or business people, put this information out for your employees. It's important that we have a healthy workforce, obviously, and there are some things as business owners and managers that we can do proactively to help our employees stay healthy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're to the end of our third segment today. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to do my Silver Fox tip of the week. 
Uh, it's a very interesting thing. How do we get in our own way when we're trying to build a business? So come back with us and we'll talk about it. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. Listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schistler, your Silver Fox advisor and host of the Weekly Business Hour. Well, we're in our fourth segment today, and this is where I like to expand a little bit of information and perhaps knowledge experience that I've gained through my experience of 40 plus years of being an entrepreneur. And today I thought we'd talk about what is preventing you from moving forward. I think this is a condition, perhaps as we called it in the last segment, a chronic condition. Uh, for many, many business owners, particularly small business owners and entrepreneurs, we hit these roadblocks and we feel like the road has been closed. Sometimes it can be severe. Sometimes it's just small things. We call them, say, bumps in the road. But what is it that's causing us not to be able to move forward in ourselves and particularly as it relates to our business? Because we have a business. We may have employees. Everybody's having a hard time struggling to get forward. Let's talk about it. I think the first thing you have to do is identify what the, the barriers are. Are there external barriers, such as you need money to grow and expand? Or is it more likely to be an internal barrier, something you yourself have created? And I have found in my practice many times, barriers are created by the owner of the business. So often and many times they don't realize it. And let me go through several examples to make the point here. First of all, it could be something that you just can't let go. It could be something in the past in a business. It could be an employee. It could be a vendor. It could be even a customer or a group of customers that for some reason, emotionally or otherwise, you can't let go of them. The idea, you know, that some of us, and I will raise my hand on this, I was guilty of this, very early in my career, is it was something that I believed, yes, it was holding us back, but I believed at some point it would work itself out. I believed that that employee would get it and they would get on with things and be the good employee they needed to be. And I kept believing that at some point it would work itself out. Let me suggest that is really false logic. And the idea is that ultimately, if you don't square things around, if you don't take the steps to let go of something, that potentially it can drive you to bankruptcy. Don't laugh. This has happened before to business people. They didn't let go soon enough, change direction, and the next thing they ended up in a very, very deep hole, and it ended up in a bankruptcy. So look at what's holding you back first, and if in something internal is causing you some pain, identify what it is, and take steps to change it. The second thing is you doubt your own abilities. This happens. I mean, there's no doubt. We're an entrepreneur. We've started a business. We have strengths and we have weaknesses. This is true of everyone. And the fact that we doubt our abilities, we doubt ourselves. Many times we won't, in my opinion, admit that. But sometimes it's happening. And the fact that what happens is your lack of confidence in yourself leads to kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, if you will. You're not moving forward because you believe you can't move forward. You don't know where to go. You seem confused. And at this point, I'm going to do a little self-serving comment. Find a mentor is one way to work through this. Find someone like myself that's been there, done it, and can help you understand what's slowing you down, what's holding you back, and help you build that confidence you need, if that's the question, so you can move forward. Mentors are an important part of building businesses. I had them throughout my career, and I encourage anyone who wants to build a growing business to get one for themselves. Third thing I'd like to mention is you don't know how to say no. I mean, how many times and the people get barraged, especially if they're good at what they do? And this can be within the business, your employees. You know, my dad was in business, and early on in the career, they kept a little metal box with some cash in it, the petty cash, 
and they would have employees come to them and say, well, I need $5, $10. Again, this was back in the day, so that was a significant amount of money, and they would want to borrow $5, $10 till payday. Well, he kept only a certain amount of money, and when that was gone, he'd turn the box upside down and say, hey, we're empty, we're closed for business. So that said no, but you've got to recognize that you only have so much time and talent and money to serve people and work with them, and you've got to be able to say no when no needs to happen because the key is you need to focus on your business when, and keep it moving in order to achieve success. Get past these mental barriers. That's my real encouragement in this piece because they're there. They're real. I experienced them. I know many people that I've worked with that experience them. It's important to read and listen to what others say and then reflect on your own behavior and guide yourself in what's best for you and your business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us this week. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to visit with you. I want to ask you, please put a note on your calendar to join us next Monday right here on IRLoneStar.com at 11 o'clock. And let me mention, I'll be on vacation, so the show next week will be a playback of one of the great shows we've had in the past. But I still encourage you to listen. If you haven't heard that show, then please listen to the show or listen to the podcast. And remember, if you want to sponsor the Weekly Business Hour, we have sponsorships available for quality business. All you need to do is to contact me at rick at irlonestar.com for details. I'd love to talk to you about being a sponsor of the program. I think it's a worthy advertising thing to do, and I really feel that your business would find more success if you connect yourself to the Weekly Business Hour. And look for today's podcast on the Weekly Business Hour page as IRLoneStar.com, the website, or Facebook later in the week. Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour page, YouTube, the Weekly Business Hour channel, and throughout iTunes, Google, you can find the show that we had today and listen to it at your leisure. Well, I want to thank you for joining us, and remember to stay in touch with what's happening right here in Montgomery County right here on Lone Star Community Radio. Until next week, stay engaged and keep your focus on what counts for your business. Thanks for checking out this podcast of Lone Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's community radio station. If you enjoyed this recording, make sure to check out our past shows online at IRLoneStar.com or their respective video or podcast formats on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. If you have any questions regarding the show, either it being about sponsorships or questions for the host, contact the station manager at D-I-C-K at IRLoneStar.com or call the station at 936-647-3776. This show was recorded in downtown Conroe, Texas at the Lone Star Community Radio Studio. And Lone Star Community Radio reserves all rights to this recording and images.